and he's great, and he works on his shit, and give him a lot of love and support. Adrian Colon, give it up. Talk real quick about how things have been going. Well, I've I just recently started getting back into comedy. After a two-year hiatus, this is basically me getting back into, you know, the swing of things. You know, when I first started, you know, I was building up steam, I was opening up for for people. Um, you know. I was doing okay, but then I let the anxiety get in the way of me, and, and, and I, just, I just stopped. <laughs> Talking about older women, where's all my Tan Island girls in here? That's right, people, I hang with a bunch of feisty, fun, older women. And yeah. I call them the Golden Girls with Machine Guns. <laughs> so this little board that you see behind me, this is where a lot of my ideas come in. Sometimes at night, I wake up in the middle of the night and there's something on my mind, there's something funny I thought about or whatever, and I just pin it on the board. So what worked on that show and what did not? Well, I mean, hey, what's, what's up, it? motherfuckers? Didn't well, work. yeah, maybe hey, what's so up, motherfuckers? That. That's a start. I can't greet people <laughs> like that. That's not nice. <laughs> How do you like working with your brother? It sucks. He's a fucking cunt. <laughs> This is what I'm struggling with because I, I have to put in there something that describes the old lady. Like, you know, if you look like Endora from Bewitch. I like that part. You like Endora from I Bewitch? I like Endora. We don't fight. Why do you have an attitude for it? Because I don't have we that have here. We can't be fighting if we're writing because nothing's going to come out of it and we're just going to fuck up the whole night. What, let me know what's next. Well, I just told you. I, you want me to scratch? I'm scratching the surface. Mind you, I'm already... From here to here, I'm already like at least two and a half minutes deep. I can't give my whole family tree in a five then minute what? set. No, I do. I, I like I like working with my brother because um, he understands me. <laughs> so take me through a day before you go perform live. <laughs> you have a show. It's on a Thursday night. Uh -huh. What is Thursday morning like for you? Uh, what is Thursday? What is Wednesday? Tuesday? Monday. If I like, if I find out like a week in advance that I'm performing that next Thursday, I'm a wreck from that moment to then. Good evening. Welcome to Pint Bar. How are you guys doing tonight? How you overcome it? <clears throat> um, the liquor. <laughs> I do. I drink like right before I go to a show. And as soon as I get there, where's the bar? Uh, this is Speakeasy uh, Comedy Open Mic. It's our m monthly contest every third Thursday. I am Rich Kiamko. I will be your host and MC for the evening. Make some noise, people! Yay! This year, this like January, is my two year anniversary of being vegan. Vegan is when you don't eat any meat, any dairy, any eggs, any cheese, any joy. It's just uh, vegetables and regret. <laughs> Once I say that opening line or whatever it was I did in the opening, and I hear that first laughter, then you know, then I could relax and then kind of comes together. Uh, our next contestant, please welcome Adrian Colon. How many shots? How many? How many shots does it take to kill a dragon? <laughs> At least four. Probably like four of them and then a beer, because I don't want to be fucked up and sloppy on stage either. So I get enough just to get a buzz and then I have to get like a Coors Light or something just to keep it like that. What's up, New Jersey? Make some fucking noise. I mean, come on, y'all. You know? I actually forgot what I was going to say and I fucked up. Um, I forgot my lines. <laughs> <laughs> And then the older women are even worse because they all want me to make them over. Like, I'm gonna come out and whip out some magic dildo and turn them into a fucking Victoria's Secret Angel model. 
and this lady came up to me, right? I was having a cigarette. She was 70, I think. I mean, she may have been younger. You know, white people age horribly. <laughs> so she's like, Adrian, I need your expert advice. So I'm like, okay. She's like, I'm looking for a new hairdo to look sexy and young. And you guys, yeah, she did the hand thing. She's like, you guys know about that stuff. So I'm like, okay. So she's like, um, what cut will make me look good? So I was like, honey, I'm afraid the only cut that would make you look good would involve a head sack and a fucking guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up for Adrian Colon. Yeah, I don't think it was that great. my childhood home. This is where uh, I basically grew up. I, this is where it all started for me as far as like fears and, 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 and you know, just everything. You know, how to survive. I had to have a, you know, sometimes people say I have an attitude when I talk or whatever. Um, it, uh, honey, it's East Trenton. This is where I'm from. And this is where it was developed. And that was necessary back then you know, in order to survive. I mean, I was like a little ass kid walking around these streets, you know what I mean? And I got, you know, the watch out for the bullies. I got robbed a lot. What were some of the sweet moments? Um, I don't know, I guess hanging out like back then, it was like the 80s. So, I don't know, just being around like my older sister and all her friends, and they thought like they were the shit, like they were so cool and stuff. And, you know, they were playing the old Houdini record things like that, fat boys. And you know, we just used to chill, like, you know what I mean? We used to like hang out on the porch or back in the schoolyard. Um, I don't know, there was, there was some sweetness to it. around New York and uh, Jersey City. Please give a warm welcome to Adrian Colon. You know how those people dress like the crazy monsters or where the wild things are and they dry hump each other? I'm on that kind of level right now. And then to make matters worse, I have what they refer to as lollipop syndrome. I don't know if you heard of that. That's when you have a little body and a big ass head. Seriously, no, look at me from the side. I look like a fucking tennis racket with a chin strap. I think I need a little refill. Oh no, I mean juice. This is just juice. Vitamin C. <laughs> so so we got your mother. You brought your mother up several mm. times. Wait. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Really? You gonna hit me with that one? <laughs> Tell us me about your mother. Yes, I'm seeing a shrink. I'm not ashamed of it. Not socially, clinically. And um, it's very interesting to think that you learn about yourself in therapy. <laughs> it's true. Like, I've learned that I have deep-rooted mommy issues because my mom didn't nurture me as a child, you know? You know, like, now it's different. Now we're adults and we get along better and we have a better relationship. But sometimes she'll come to a show and, you know, I'll be talking about her not being nurturing or whatever. I mean, to my advantage, her English comprehension was not that great, so I could kind of get away with certain things, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, you know, my mom was not, you know, she wasn't nurturing. I, I think she was, she was abusive, um, verbally, physically, you name it. My mom was, my mom was, you know, <sighs> I love my mom to death, you know what I mean? The last thing I want to do is, is, is talk bad about her. Um, but do I agree with her parenting? Uh, no, not at all. She made Joan Crawford look like June Cleaver. <laughs> oh yeah, her idea of family time involved a bottle of Jack Daniels and driving me into oncoming traffic. <laughs> oh, wow, they're a tough crowd. Oh, this is a Dr. Phil show, get her the fuck over. I'm the one living it. <laughs> oh my God, they, they made Ruben feel horrible. Like the things that came out of their mouth. Oh, I'd rather you be a fucking drug addict than be a faggot. 
you, you like like shit like that like who the fuck says that to their own kid you know who the fuck does that who says that to their own kid so watching him do that i was just like okay what's the fucking point of me even saying anything to her i'm gonna get the same reaction so for a long time um she questioned me oh are you gay i was like mind your fucking business that came easier to me to tell my mom to mind her fucking and then those exact words mind your fucking business that came easier for me to say yes to her and the only reason I confirmed it with her was because she was coming to a comedy show. Um, it was in New Hope. Uh, it was sold out. It was like a big show and she was coming to watch. And I was going to talk about some, you know, gay stuff that she was going to hear. And so that day I took her out to dinner. We went to on Layla and Center Street to this place called Tropical. So it was really good. Um, and I sat there with her and, you know, I'm talking, Mom, you know, I love you. You know, you're coming to the show tonight and, and um, you know, you're going to hear some things that might make you uncomfortable, you know? And, and she kind of looked at me and, and gave me like that look like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Um, so I was like, mom, you know, you know where I'm going with you, right? And she was like, she started crying immediately. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm gay. So she starts crying, bawling at the table. It's embarrassing because, you know, everybody's at the restaurant. <laughs> so I'm a little like trying not to get like noticed, like, like to the table. But she started crying and then I started crying. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm still your son. I'm still the, the same person who's always been by your side. I'm, I'm the son that helped you raise your kids. I'm, I'm, I'm still that son. You know what I mean? I'm that son that when you had a, a, a sweet tooth, you know, I would go to the supermarket with for you and get you a piece of cake. So what makes it, what, what makes it so different that I'm saying this to you? I'm still, I'm still your son. And the fact that I had to tell her that because she was coming to a show and she's still crying about it. That was hard to do. How long are you capable of going with a routine if it doesn't get you the results? Because ultimately, laughs is the results, right? We're, Absolutely. So if you, how, two months, how long before you would say, I need to try new jokes? On stage, if I'm coming across like I'm sad and I'm, you know, pity party person, then that's the problem. Um, then, yeah. It could be me, it is me, it is my performance, sometimes it is the material. It's a little bit of everything, it's not, I gotta wipe a tear, it's not that I'm crying, it's just a little cold out here. Um, I don't know, I don't know, Ron, it, it, it's, it's just, I don't know. I've done, I've done this kind of material before and it's done well, and I've done material like this where it's bombed a lot of times, where people are like, oh shit, that's not funny, that's kind of fucked up. I don't know. Um, yeah, so we're having like a family dinner today. Um, and this is my mom, Edith. Hi. Hi, mom. Hi, Lily. She's not very happy right now. Okay. Um, because she got um, LASIK surgery and, and she's kind of like blind in one eye now and she's thinking they did something wrong to her eye and I keep telling her we're gonna call tomorrow and find out. But she keeps thinking she's complete. She think they messed up. The, she think they messed up her eye and she's blind. I already told her I'm gonna call the doctor tomorrow and we're gonna set up an emergency appointment for her and she's still talking about her fucking eye and I'm like. How many? Did you hear her yeah. talk about that? How many times have you heard her already? Man? You've been here, <laughs> what, not even an hour? <laughs> yeah. Give me one word to describe you, mom. Tough. She's a very tough lady. Um, I don't know what to say about my mom. I'm no. like, I'm on the spot. You're tough, mom. Come on. Sí, soy una sobreviviente. Which is that, Delilah? Mom? Yeah, we heard a big argument today. Well, what? Something so stupid. Wow. Oh, yeah, you know it's true, Mom. You know it's true. We had a big argument, and she said, well, I'm just going to be here for 15, 20 minutes, and I'm leaving. Yeah, that's what it's saying. It's true. He did say that, but why? Because you start problems all the time. And nadie te preguntó. 
Vas a empezar porque yo me voy de verdad. Ay, man, stop. Está grabando, ¿no? Porque si no me voy. No, you're fine. You're gonna get the recording. <laughs> Listen, I cannot be here and just sitting down. I have to move my legs. Oh, what do you mean? Just chill for a minute. We're chilling. What do you think I'm doing? Right, like, always trying to make it about you. Relax. It's not about me. I'm just saying. You should shut up. Shut up. So me and you cannot get along, cause you know what? One hour is enough for us. Yes, and I've been here too, so I've already met my. Uh, I'm about to do. I had a yeah, have a pill. You know what? You got it. I have a makeup. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. Oh, that was so he gets nervous. When he's on stage, but he has to understand, he has to have pride in himself, and he know he he can do it. So. Oh no! I want to just really stop and take a breath. Let's both, here, give me your hands. Let's just relax into this because I want you to be able to talk about what happened and I know bombing is really difficult and I've done it many times so you don't have to speed up. I want you to really just be in the moment with me and tell me what you feel like was happening. I, I felt like I, didn't, I wasn't connecting with my material. I think show business, everybody knows show business is the hardest business on the planet. And within show business, I would say stand-up uh, is the hardest. I don't know what it's like to be a ukulele player, but I know that stand-up is hard as shit. It's therapeutic right. to let it all out. So maybe start to reframe your thoughts around it. Well, that's what I'm doing now. I'm okay. trying to get around that. I'm trying not to take a couple of shots before going on the stage. Oh, you up, do? You, I have been, You yeah, drink? Have, okay, I does that been. help you? Um, sometimes, um, but I want to be able to do it without I want to really encourage you to stop doing that. Okay. Because you don't want to be relying on that. No, and like you not. said, it doesn't always even work. No. And if you do stuff like you get on The Tonight Show or The Fallon Show, you know, maybe you have one too many and you're really off. Or I want right. you to just work organically and find a way to ride the nerves. Okay. Okay. All right. This is a really hard life. And it's definitely the road less traveled. And if you're going to do this, you have to really make peace with what it is. Take what you already have, because you have a lot of great stuff. Take what you already have. Look at your ideas. And it's very repetitive. That's the discipline. And look at it, and look at it, and look at it, and hone it so that you get up and that train bit kills. The Hello Kitty bit kills. The moving from Trenton to Hamilton kills. You got to get this stuff to a point where you've peeled away the excess, you've made as crystal clear the idea and the setup and punch and the comedy of it as possible, and then you got to do those bits over and over again so that that's your like master set. But I think the biggest challenge he faces and a lot of us face is really that inside job stuff of just not listening to all that crap in your head telling you you're not good enough or you shouldn't be doing this or oh I bombed on two shows so what am I doing I got to rethink my whole approach. You don't have to. The, the biggest enemy any performer faces is within themselves. You know, I, I've got to evolve as well. I can't go around just doing the same fucking stuff every damn way. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, you but you know around. what? You're very, you're speedy. Okay. You're speedy right now. And I want you again to try to take a breath, mind. take a breath, because your mind is racing and going, and you're, you gotta, you wanna go and, and quicken, quicken, you're quickening. And I want to encourage you to slow down. Adrian Colon is going to end up being a better comedian than he even knows at this point.
and he's great. And he works on his shit and give him a lot of love and support. Adrian Colon, give it up. How you doing, New York? I have a round of applause. Uh, how many people are single tonight? Oh, okay, quite a few. Ma'am, hiding back there, are you single by choice? Oh yeah, you just answered my question. You know, I own it. I'm alone because, you know, when you're a five foot, 425 pound male, you know, people don't take you serious. I mean, look at me tonight. I look like someone got the UPS driver and threw him in a fucking dryer. <laughs> you know? Like some people come up to me and they're like, you're adorable. Adorable. But it's not adorable like they think I'm hot or anything. It's adorable like Hello Kitty. <laughs> Which isn't a compliment, right? Because Hello Kitty is adorable, but you know, nobody wants to fuck Hello Kitty. <laughs> and you know, nothing's exciting anymore. You know what I did last Saturday night? I actually sat home with my two dogs and watched Precious on Netflix. <laughs> Yo, did you see the movie Precious? For those who didn't see it, basically it's about this fat, black, illiterate teenage girl who's abused and pregnant with her second child. I didn't go see this movie when it was in theaters. I mean, why spend $13? I mean, I went to public schools in New Jersey. <laughs> if I wanted to see that shit, you know, I could just flip through the pages of my yearbook. That's right, people. I am from the hood. I'm originally from Trenton, New Jersey. Oh, you know where it is? Actually, it's funny because it's just listed as the third most dangerous city in the country. Oh, yeah. Them damn Hispanics and blacks are just massacring each other. So I moved to Hamilton, New Jersey, which is predominantly white. And it turns out that uh, they're pretty much fucked up, too. Oh yeah, they have a list of their own. You know what they're known for in Hamilton? The highest suicide rate by train in New Jersey. <laughs> oh yeah, white people like going to Hamilton train station and hurling themselves in front of oncoming trains. <laughs> like the last guy actually didn't jump in front of a train, he actually stood in the tracks and waited for the train to come. You know, right, like, how the fuck do you plan that? I mean, did he have like a train schedule? And he's like... Yeah, that Amtrak 411, it should be here any minute now. <laughs> Shit, let me tell you, so I've had my share of blue days, I'm sure everybody in here has, but I've never considered jumping in front of a train. You know, with my luck, I would jump in front of that slow ass local train. <laughs> and you know, it wouldn't even kill me, it would just drag me all the way to New York. And then once I got to New York, my broke ass wouldn't have any train fare, so I would have to jump again in front of another local train and get home. Anyway, thank you so much, New York. Y'all been awesome. Thank you. It was nice to be able to be here doing it sober. I've never, I had never performed sober before, so this was huge for me. You know what I mean? Everybody laughing and clapping, and, and I feel really good about tonight, you know? So, from here on, I, I'm, just, I'm just going up, you know what I mean? I'm going up, and, and I, feel, I feel great about that.